Well, you know, 110,000 people die of age-related causes each and every day worldwide. Can age ever be under our control? Award-winning futurist, researcher, and keynote speaker Nicholas Badminton joins us on Canada Now for his uh, weekly visit. Nick, you're one of those that wants to live forever, right? Let's give, let's give me a thousand, right? I, I don't want to live forever, Jeff. You know, in fact, I, you know, they're, 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 yeah, I've got I've got controversial ideas around this in the face mm. of those sort of future looking folk. They're like, I want to live forever. I want to I want to change the world. We can we can cure age aging as a as a, as a disease. Yeah, and that's and that's what we're going to get to. But you, you got to live to be a thousand. Who am I going to hang out with in nine hundred years? In nine hundred years, be like Yoda. We'll both be small <laughs> green creatures, and we won't be good at the force, so we won't be very useful to anyone. <laughs> no, I'm not useful now. Why start with any with anybody else or, or later on uh, in life? However long that's going to be. So we wonder if humans today can live to be a thousand years old, as seen on NicholasBamton.com. You, you got a video up of. Uh, Dr. Aubrey de Grey, a biomedical gerontologist, chief science officer of the uh, SENS Research Foundation and VP of New Technology Discovery at Age X Therapeutics. And uh, Dr. de Grey believes there's a 50-50 chance that most people alive today could live to be a thousand years old. You know what? I've been following Aubrey de Grey for a number of years, and he's a fascinating guy, clearly incredibly smart. Uh, it's got a very noble cause to to cure the disease of aging. I, you know, I, I can't get behind it. A fifty fifty chance that most people today will be live to be a thousand years old. That's not very good odds. And plus, I, you know, th- this is the spin. You know, the, I, I, I'm not sure if he's actually based down in Silicon Valley, but this is the kind of fetishistic spin that they have to raise hundreds of millions of dollars for uh, for research. It's interesting. Uh, by by 2025, the whole longevity um, healthcare wellness industry is going to be about 25 trillion dollars in power. You know, in, in terms of like the, the investment globally and on a yearly basis it's insane you know so he's he's sort of tapping into that do i think that people are most that most people alive today are going to live to be a thousand years old i think that that is very far from the truth jeff Mm. yeah but i mean when you think about it if we were to pour in as much resource as we could into any one thing i mean you got to save the planet we need a place to live uh, but as well, wouldn't it be to get us to live as long as humanly possible? What else should we be spending our money on? But, but what, I, mean, I, I question why we need to, to have this goal of living forever. I, I really fundamentally uh, you know, question that. I mean, wh- wh- what does it achieve? If, say, you and I, uh, we live to be a 1,000 years old, what does it achieve in the world? Now, if we say look at some of the world's greatest scientists or thinkers, people that could literally work with, you know, n- new young upstarts that are coming up with new ideas, that are riffing on their ideas. What if, you know, Stephen Hawking or Carl Sagan or, or Marie Curie or all these people could have lived forever, right? Mm. Yeah, there could be some value there, but... For everyone, I don't think everyone needs to live for for a long, long time. In well, fact, I, no, you know, every every. I think this mortal coil is is pretty good for a lot of people out there. Well, I think there's a lot of people that you would look at them and say, "You don't need to be around for a thousand years." We get it. We get it. It's okay. It's 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 fine. But you're and you're right. There are some that you go, "Hey, that 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 person needs to be around forever." So the idea with with with, with Doctor DeGray is. Looking at repairing the damage that we do to our bodies, which are working 24-7 for decades. So we we go to a doctor not only when something is wrong, but regularly to repair the damage from aging. Yeah. 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 It sounds and, like and a machine, you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, you know, I, I think the, the research is entirely valid when we start to think about, you know, how it can help, you know, the deterioration of the human body, um, problems with joints, the mitochondri- mitochondrial um, problems, you know, the, the, the wearing down of what we are fundamentally as these meat bags that we, uh, that we operate <laughs> as, right, Jeff? Uh, but, but really, I mean, already, you know, I'm, I'm 48 turning 49 this year's, 
this year and there's a whole bunch of stuff that i feel in my body that i didn't feel 25 yeah. years ago right? yeah and and you know if we can solve all of that i'm all for it but this this grandiose like sort of techno fetishistic thousand year goal just seems off a little bit to okay me. um so like are, are you uh you know would you be on par with like logan's run you know maybe not 20 but you know, there's a there's an age limit. You you, you you can't live past sixty. You can't live past eighty. You can't live past a hundred. Right. That's your cutoff point. Right. Now these are only decisions that you can make as an individual. I'd just like to say that and be very clear. Like yeah. I would never say everyone in the world should follow how I think about the world. So Logan's Run is one of my most favorite science fiction movies. So in the world of twenty one sixteen, a person's maximum age is strictly legislated to twenty one years old to the day and on that day it's called last day you go into a sleep shop and you're willingly executed via pleasure inducing toxic gas now that's a bit much right and if you're running then you know these the people logan was the runner that turned in well was the person that caught runners that turned into the runner yeah. it's a great film go and watch it this is what i think and this is wildly unpopular with my partner and her and my mother-in-law why, why don't I just get to the age of 70, just hit a button, say thank you very much. I've had a fantastic life. I don't look like crap. I'm still fairly uh, fa fairly operational as a human. And, uh, you know, I don't run out of money. I, I don't have someone changing my adult diaper. I'm not living in some sort of care home somewhere. Yeah. I'm forgotten by my, my kid, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's how it is. But why not? Why not make that choice? Uh, you know, maybe I'm sick. You can make that choice. Euthanasia is an absolutely valid way to look at the world. But yeah, why don't we just choose 70? Like the age of 70 isn't that old. Okay, so maybe well, I'll up it to 80 years old. You might know. you might start approaching 70 and go, wait a minute, I'm not done here. 80. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's and, and, you know, it, it's interesting. I had the thought mm -hmm. when I sat down with my investment advisor. He goes, yeah, but if you live to be 85 years old, this is how much you need to earn. And it's like, so I'm saving money so that in my later years, I can like live so, live a subsistence lifestyle. It's like, what if we just cut it off and like I have a wild gangbuster of a time until I'm like 70, 75 and say, thank you very much. I've had a good time. Good luck. Yeah. And uh, looking at the average age, uh, I've got an American study here. It's uh, 78 years old. So uh, that's in and around uh, that time. Uh, you know, me, on the other hand, uh, I want everything that could possibly be done to, to, to have me stick around mostly because I want to be a burden on my family. That's, that's what I'm looking to do with my kids. I want to stretch this thing out to go, geez, this guy just will not leave. <laughs> I got to take care of this guy. I got to financially support him. That's, you know, I think, I think they got to turn around and take care of me. So you sent me a link. This is one of the most disturbing videos I've ever seen. It's not, not, <laughs> not, not gory or, or, or gruesome, nothing like that, but it's this, video of like a capsule that yeah. you could willingly get into to die and you could be there uh and and and, and uh see darkness or you could see uh, the, the beauty of, of the land uh, the, the landscape and earth uh you could change your mind if you haven't died yet in, in in the capsule and nitrogen gas it puts you to sleep and you you go away peacefully but it was a really creepy ad for it. It was very, yeah. it was like something out of the seventies, and you know, but very futuristic. Yeah. I think I think it was uh, taking some footage of a film called Soylent Green as well. So it's kind of oh, yeah. screwy. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you know, as a futurist, like we do these speculative futures. What could this be like? Um, I, I saw a Twitter conversation happening with a guy called Professor Steve Fuller from the UK, and he was like, "Voluntary euthanasia is going to be the new death." In this immortal, in, in this immortal wow. world that we live in, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, the ethical boundaries of what's gonna, what's gonna be, uh, sort of the decisions that we have to make in the future could be really, really screwy. You know, um, it's it's fascinating to to think about this. You know, the when we start to think about how long we're gonna live and what we're gonna do whilst we're on this planet and our families and what we're gonna leave behind and that legacy. You know, it becomes very real, raw, and visceral for us all. And um, when these people are out there promising that everyone can live forever, it's just a way of, of, of getting, you know, investment from people. 
You know, it's like, you know, maybe we want to be like frozen when we die and then in the future they can fix us and we'll come back to life. It's the same kind of fetishistic idea around, mm. you know, feeding our own ego, Jeff. Yeah. I, I want to be frozen in carbonite like Han Solo. That's cool. what I want to do. Um, I'm in. When you're 70, 75 years old, just checking uh, because I'll be there. Uh, did, did you want to be you know, put inside a rocket and, and shot out into space as we talked about before for your burial. We've already spoken about that. You know what? It, <laughs> you know, if, if my partner and my kid, at least, you know, they, they remember me fondly just a little bit. I'll be happy with that, Jeff. All right, cool. I'll talk to them. We'll, we'll, we'll make some plans. <laughs> we'll get on a call and get that done. Check out Nicholas badminton.com futurist researcher, keynote speaker, Nick badminton. Always a pleasure. My friend, I'll bug you again. I'll see you in a thousand years, Jeff. A thousand years, man. We'll be hanging out. We'll be hanging out. I need a pal. I need a pal in 900 plus years. <laughs>